This is a story about last Thursday morning, May 7th, 2009. This is a story about how the Torah shocked and disturbed me. And this is a story that goes backwards. So let me start first with the following Shabbat. This past Shabbat, May 9th, at our synagogue, Tzvereth Beth David, Jerusalem, we had one of the most amazing bar and bat mitzvah celebrations ever. And indeed, it was one of the most precious Shabbats of my entire life. On that morning, six adults with developmental disabilities, men and women, celebrated their bar and bat mitzvahs. They had never had the opportunity to celebrate their bar and bat mitzvah before. These six adults were living in the Miriam home, an enormous and wonderful institution that provides services and also administers group homes for adults with intellectual disabilities. Now, the six adults got up on Shabbat morning and they aced it. They did such a wonderful job. The men came up and did their aliyot. The women came up and blessed She'achianu. And all six gave short speeches. And truly, for everyone in the room, it was me'ein olam haba. It was a little slice of heaven. The spirit was just so exceptional. But now let's go backwards. Let's go back to Thursday morning. Thursday morning was the rehearsal for this wonderful bar mitzvah. And so we have the men come up and they're going to practice their aliyot. They're going to be practicing being called to the Torah. And to give them a realistic experience, I stood in for the Torah reader, opened up the Torah scroll, and began to read for them. The first paragraph I point to immediately shocks me. I start to read a paragraph that reads like this. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron saying, Any man of your offspring throughout their generations in whom there will be a blemish shall not come near to offer the food of his God. Here in simple English, I'm reading a passage that says, that people with physical disabilities are not allowed to serve in the temple. And so if you're someone who has a nose with no bridge, who has one limb that's longer than the other, who has eyebrows that are exceptionally long, or has spots on his skin because he has scurvy, all of those people are not qualified to serve in the temple. And immediately, I was in shock. Here I was, contemplating in this particular parsha to celebrate a bar mitzvah for men and women with intellectual disabilities. And the Torah is telling me that these people, people with disabilities, could not serve in the temple. And so I was shocked and I was disturbed. And I was just thinking, how could it be that God would discriminate against people with disabilities? How could it be that a mere blemish would exclude someone from serving in the temple. Now, initially, I thought that maybe I would just ignore this particular problem. Maybe I'd just put it on the side. But I realized I had to address it, and I had to address it Saturday morning. I had to address it in front of the congregation on Shabbat. And so I had to think about this. I had to wonder, what does this mean? And the truth is, is that there are no coincidences in life. Everything comes up for a purpose. And this passage was meant to challenge me. And so I thought about it, and I came up with a solution that I think is absolutely true. It may be a bit radical. It doesn't really follow the rules of halachic hermeneutics. It goes out of the categories of the normal way of interpreting Jewish law. But I want to bring an analogy, and it may be a misplaced analogy, but I want to bring an analogy from another law a rabbinic law, and it relates to a similar situation called Birkat Kohanim, the priestly blessing. Birkat Kohanim is offered by the priests every day, and in, in outside of Israel, in Ashkenazi communities, they offer it every holiday, and the priest raises his hands and he blesses the congregation. And the rule is that a priest with a particular physical blemish on his body, on his arms, is disqualified from giving Birkat Kohanim, the priestly blessing. Now what's interesting about this rule is that there is an exception to it. We say that someone who is Dash someone who is well known in his community, 
can give Birkat Kohanim even if he has a physical blemish. So someone with blemished hands who normally would be barred from giving Birkat Kohanim, if the entire community is familiar with that blemish and is comfortable with it, he can give that blessing. Because the essential rule is the reason why these blemishes disqualify is because the community will be distracted and disturbed by the physical blemish. If the community has risen to the level where they know the person well enough and they feel comfortable with the person, so then the physical blemish is no longer a distraction and no longer considered to be a flaw. And I was thinking about this particular rule and I wanted to interpret this passage based on that rule. I believe what this passage in the Torah is telling us is not that God rejects those with disabilities, not that God thinks less of people with long eyebrows, but rather God is holding a mirror to the community and telling the community, I can't allow these people to serve in the temple because you're too petty to allow them to. You're too distracted and disturbed by physical problems to allow them to serve in the temple. And this is precisely the point. When the Torah comes and talks about physical blemishes, disqualifying a Kohen, the Torah is holding a mirror to the community and saying, you disqualify these people, therefore they cannot serve. And indeed the Parsha is meant as a challenge. It's meant to challenge all of us to find some way to look past physical disabilities. And it's meant to challenge us to somehow reach a point in history where we will look past those with physical blemishes. This is the lesson of the Torah. When the Torah talks about blemishes, it's not talking about the blemishes of those who are flawed. It is talking about the blemishes of the community. And it's reminding us that we're simply too petty to let things go. We're simply too petty to look beyond the blemish. Now on Shabbat morning, when all six of our bar and bat mitzvah adults, all six of our participants, came up after the services and stood on the podium, the entire congregation, 700 people, stood up and gave them a standing ovation. And that moment was very important. It was important for all six of the participants because finally, for once, they were being embraced into the heart of the community. But frankly, that moment of standing ovation was even more important for the community because finally, the community was able to see past the flaws, to see past the blemishes, to look at the soul within. And at that moment, we felt a moment of me'ain olam haba, we felt a little slice of heaven. The community had finally stood up and started to see things differently. Thank you, Rabbi. That was beautiful.